Hey guys, my name is Taha Bhatt, I'm a third year medical student, and is this you when you're on the ward? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I literally have no idea what the f I'm doing right now, bro. Do you wish you could walk onto the ward like this? No chance! So that's what you got! Yo! Well one! Any patients need poking out with a butterfly needle, you know? Today, I'll be giving you guys some tips on how to become more comfortable and more confident when on the wards. Not only will this make your experience more enjoyable, but also you'll learn a lot more from your experience. You'll see a lot more patients, you'll do a lot more stuff because you're more confident. Tip number one, be nice. This should be quite obvious, you know, but it's so important to be nice to, to the doctors, to the nurses, you know, especially nurses because they can make your life a lot more easier. From medical student and the foundation year doctors and even the, the more senior doctors, you know, you, you can learn from nurses, they can show you stuff, they can teach you how to do some jobs. They'll make life a lot more easier. So it's so important to have a good relationship with nurses and doctors to improve that team morale. You know, for a medical student, if you're nice to the doctors and nurses, they're just gonna be more keen to teach you. But also, it's important to understand that a lot of the staff might be very busy, so the consultant or some of the doctors or some of the staff might not have the time to teach you. So don't interpret this as, you know, they don't like you. They are just busy with the patients who are dying on their ward. Be nice to patients. Now, this is the perfect opportunity for you on the ward to practice your empathy and your non-verbal communication with the patients. It's a bit different when practicing empathy with your colleague, when you're in the classroom and you're practicing taking history than actually talking to a patient on the ward who has, you know, say, tried to commit suicide from alcohol overdose or who is going through a really rough time. The hostel is not short of patients who have been through a rough time and who are quite overwhelmed by the whole experience of being in a hospital and going through some sort of traumatic experience. Now for a medical student, it's important to work within your competency. You know, you don't want to say something that might make a patient with a mental illness a lot worse, especially if they're not your patient and so you don't know them, you don't know what might trigger them, you don't want to say anything that will harm the patient. But at the same time, it's a great opportunity for you to sort of become more comfortable when approaching these types of patients. So yeah, just ask the doctor or whoever if you can just take a history from a patient and just, you know, if it's safe to do it, then just walk in and just introduce yourself and start the history and examination. Number two, make a plan. So before you go into the ward, make a mental note or, or sort of write down a list of some of the things you want to do and want to learn and see. Now, at the very beginning, when you're just starting your clinical placement years, you know, you might be nervous, which is very normal. You might want to just follow the doctor around on their ward round, I just shadow them and maybe, you know, do a few little stuff. You, you know, just getting used to the environment and customizing yourself to who people are, where stuff is, and learning how the handover and ward round actually works. But I'd say after sort of the, the second or third time of doing that, the ward round sometimes can be a bit boring, especially if you're not doing anything and especially if you're not too involved. It's much more exciting and valuable experience if you go in and actually do stuff. So make a mental note or write down, you know, how many bloods you want to do, what are the sign-offs you want to do, you know, if you want to take OBS, if you want to take a clinical examination history from a few patients. If you can't find an F1 or F2 and if they ask you what you want to do, just tell them or, or perhaps ask them, you know, doctor, if there's any patients you need to, uh, blood's been taken off them, you know, if I could just do that so I can learn from it or if you can show me at least. If you want to do OBS, now the trick with OBS is don't ask if a patient needs OBS being done, okay? Just ask, can I do OBS on a patient so you can sign me off? Because, you know, bloods and OBS, they're done around 10 a.m. So if you're following the ward round in the morning, you might you might miss that um, or you might not get to do it. So most of the patients might have already had their OBS done. But if you just ask, you know, a healthcare assistant or a nurse, if you can just carry out OBS on a patient and that if they can sign you off, then, then you can do that. Also, a tip for learning how to take blood. An F1 or a nurse or the best person to ask is a phlebotomist. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think you can go down to the phlebotomy department and as a medical student, you can just ask them, you know, I want to learn how to take bloods and then I think they'll just take you with them and just show you and get you to take bloods on loads of patients. And that'll be an excellent opportunity for you to learn how to take blood. All the doctors and nurses say this, but 
you'll end up just finding whatever way works best for you. You know, you'll find your own technique for taking blood. Some people prefer, you know, the venous section with the vacutainer over the butterfly and some people prefer the other way around. You'll just find whatever works best for you. At the end of the day, you need to get stuff signed off in your clinical years. So get them signed off. It's important to get these skills signed off early on because you don't want to leave them till the last second. And as a medical student, you need to get quite a few skills signed off to pass that year. Number three, do not worry about harming the patient when you're helping them. Now, this applies to stuff like taking blood from patients and stabbing them with other sharp things. You know, if you were like me, I absolutely cropped it before I took my first blood, okay? We, pra we did this in second year, we practiced it on our, on our colleagues. And yo, the person I got, yeah, my friend, she had the worst veins I've ever seen in my life. I, I'm gonna be honest, I literally just stuck the needle and I even told this to the, to the, the doctor who was teaching us. I told him, yo, I, I don't know where I'm sticking this needle in. And before that, the days before, I was, I was sweating, I was getting so nervous. I was so squeamish at the thought of sticking a needle inside someone's vein and the blood coming up the tube. Ah, oh, I, I was feeling lightheaded. And then I thought, you know, how am I gonna get through this? How am I gonna become a doctor if I'm getting so nervous and squeamish at the thought of taking blood, which is supposed to be one of the easiest procedures. But I'm telling you right now, and I promise this, okay? If you practice just taking blood from patients and real life patients, I, I guarantee you, you will start to become more and more comfortable. I can say now, I, I'm still not 100% confident, but I'm much, much, much less nervous than I was when I took blood for the first time on a real patient. And some people wanna scare you, you know, by saying, you know, oh, you can cause nerve damage by taking blood. Bro, you, you, I'm pretty sure you really need to like properly stab them really badly to cause permanent nerve damage. You need to like really want to do damage. Like serious questions would be asked if you cause nerve damage in a patient. All right, I'm just gonna take blood from you now. I expect a sharp scratch, all right? Okay, doctor. Sharp scratch incoming, all right? <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> you'll become more confident and you'll find your own way that you're most comfortable with when taking blood, okay? Don't focus on the fact that you might be causing the patient just a teeny weeny sharp little scratch. That's fine. You're caring for the patient. When you take blood, you're gonna be sending that blood off to the lab and the results will be shown to the doctor in charge of that patient and will allow the doctor to evaluate how well that patient is. And so you are contributing to the care of that patient. That is amazing. So you can do it. Tip number four, be confident. Now, I know this is easier said than done and it's very normal to be very anxious before your first time on the ward or being on the ward after a long break. But look, man, you, you're freaking awesome, man. You, you're probably a medical student you're progressing, you're doing well. Don't worry, you can do this. You probably look like a doctor as well. You know, I, I was on the ward the other day and the nurse was on her phone and said, uh, doctor, can you just, I, I don't know what she asked because I'm not a doctor, so I didn't understand it. And then I was like, I'm a third year medical student, I'm not a doctor, sorry. And so the patients will think you're doctors as well. You know, they'll have confidence in you. Now, although you must tell the patient who you are and that you're a medical student, sometimes it's best not to tell the patient that you, you don't know what you're doing. It's best to appear as confident and just, just to pretend that you know what you're doing when examining the patient or when taking history. It's important because you don't want to make the patient feel nervous and maybe the patient will then refuse to, for you to examine them and so you won't get that learning experience. But if it's a case where you can cause harm to the patient and you have no clue what you're doing, you've never practiced the procedure on a dummy before, and you're not under supervision and you haven't attained the permission of a doctor and your university, in that case, then I would just not do it. Again, you need to work within your competency. But if you've practiced it before and you've got permission and it's safe to do so, just be confident in yourself and appear confident. It's okay to make mistakes as well. You know, this is a time for you to learn. You go to the classroom to learn. You're not there to show off, okay? So it's fine, you can make mistakes. Just learn from them, learn techniques from the doctors. Make sure to listen closely to what your doctor or the nurse who's supervising you, uh, what they're saying and what their feedback is. Just have a go and if you pretend you're confident, then the patient is gonna think you know what you're doing and that's what's important. So just to summarize, be nice to the doctors and nurses, you know, they'll be more keen to teach you, you'll learn a lot more. Talk to more patients, you know, with the permission of the doctors or the staff on the ward. 
just go in and take a history and examination and do it more so you get more comfortable and more confident in front of the patients. Don't focus on the unavoidable pain that you may be causing the patient when you're trying to care for them. Don't focus on that, just focus on the fact that you're caring for them. And just enjoy it, man. Honestly, since starting my clinical placement year, you know, year three at Newcastle University, it's been so cool. We've seen loads of stuff, you know, even just the simple stuff like actually seeing jaundice on a real person rather than on the screen of a lecture theatre or in a textbook is so much more different. Getting to hear people's murmurs or the fine crackles in their lungs, it's all so, so cool. Just enjoy the experience. You know, you'll make mistakes, but you're gonna learn from them, you'll improve, and you're gonna become a sick doctor. Thanks.